How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be creating a feature comparison table using HTML and CSS. Okay, so this right here is going to be the finished product as we can see. It is a fairly simple and easy to create uh, comparison table. So we have up here, we have all of the different prices, so the monthly prices, um, the actual plan name as well as the matrix of uh, you know features and things like that. So, um, like I said, it's really easy to create this and include it on your website and it's also going to be supported on mobile devices. Okay, so going inside this tab right here, we are working with this index HTML. Okay, so we're going to begin with the HTML for the table first before moving on to the CSS. Okay, so let's just firstly uh, link up a CSS style sheet. So let's go inside here and make a new file called uh, main.css and of course now back inside my index HTML I can just perform a new link for CSS going to of course our main.css right there. Okay, so now we can head inside the body and begin on the HTML for the table. Okay, so let's firstly create a new table just like this with a class of features. Okay, so the reason for the class of features um, is so we can actually identify this table right here as being a feature comparison table. Okay. We can then create the table head just down here and inside the table head it's going to basically include both the uh, the prices and also the plan name. Okay, so let's go back inside here now and uh, we're going to be creating two rows. The first one right inside here and we can create a new table head cell right there and for the first one here it's going to be blank because it's going to refer to this cell right up here which of course is empty. Okay, so back inside here, let's keep that one blank and then we can move on to the next table header cell. So inside this one, we're actually going to give this a few classes. Okay, so let's begin with the first class here. It's going to be first off features underscore underscore cell to basically say this one right here is a cell inside the features table. And then we can give this a second class of features underscore underscore cell dash dash bold. Okay, and also once again features underscore underscore cell dash dash shaded. Okay, so now pressing enter right here, we're going to be given this class. So the reason why we have all of these different class names is because we want to be able to essentially uh, plug and play, if that makes sense, uh, different sort of functionality and uh, styles to these elements. Okay, so for example, we can see here just by the HTML, this table cell is going to be bold, so bold text, as well as being a shaded background. Okay, so we're basically just applying modifier classes to this features cell element um, to, of course, you know, give us those different functionality or styles. Okay, so basically to wrap it up really simply, it's going to be a bold shaded cell. So inside here now, we can just say basic, uh, you know, as an example, and we can do the exact same thing twice more, one for pro, and of course, one for business. Okay, so now saving this right here, we can see we of course have something like this in the browser. Okay, so let's get back inside here now and move on to styling up the actual price uh, row. So, or sorry, not styling up, uh, the HTML. So let's duplicate this table row and then we can just say inside here something like $9 per month and then we can just say um, $19 per month and then of course lastly we can say something like $49 per month. Now, this one right here is going to change because essentially we want to make this, uh, these cells bold and also large text. Okay, so let's make these three right down here large. So now it's going to be a bold and large text cell. So of course, just keep in mind that we're going to be uh, updating and applying these classes right here using the CSS, which we'll get to very shortly. Let's just save this right here and we can see we have this right here. Okay, so back inside here, let's now move on to actually including um, the main section, of course, the details and all of the different features. So back inside the HTML, let's go down here and we can create a new T body 
right down here. So for the table body, uh, we can firstly create um, our initial divider right here. So this right here is of course going to be the core functionality. Um, this is completely optional. You may choose to not have these, you know, dividers and categories for each individual um, part, but it's up to you. I'm going to be using them right here. So let's add a divider, a long row for core functionality. So back inside here, let's create a new table row. And inside here, we're going to include a TD or um, a table data cell. And this one is going to once again have a features underscore underscore cell class as well as bold and shaded. So let's just copy and paste um, everything up here and just change the TH to be a TD just like this. And we can just say right here something like core functionality. Okay. Now also, because this right here um, or this, uh, this table has a total length of four cells, I want to make this one right here take up a cold span of four. That way it covers the entire width of the table. Let's save this and of course we get something like this in the browser. Let's just quickly go inside the inspector and inspect these elements. So we can just click on this and we can see of course uh, the table is coming along quite nicely and we can see that the core functionality is going to take up the entire width of the whole table. Okay, so going back inside here, let's finish this up by uh, detailing each one of our individual features themselves. So. Uh, down inside here, let's make a new table row. And for this one, we can include a TD with a class of features underscore underscore cell. And this one is going to be a base standard cell. We can just say, for example, uh, unlimited access to, um, to 400 plus uh, tutorials or web development video tutorials. Okay, video. Uh, video tutorials. There we go. And we can now um, create a new TD right below this. And this one is going to be the actual tick itself for the basic plan. So we can just say right inside here um, for the content of the cell, uh, we can use uh, an actual uh, an HTML entity. Okay, so I'm trying to find this right here. Actually, you know what, my mistake, uh, we're not going to be using that we will be shortly in the CSS, but for now, let's just include a span right inside here. And this span is going to have a class of features underscore underscore tick. So basically, whenever this span right here with a class of features underscore underscore tick, whenever this exists, the CSS is going to output us a tick character and also it's going to be green. So just for now, uh, let's make this something like yes, just so we can see what's actually happening. Okay. Um, and we can do the exact same thing a couple more times, just like this. And we're going to also need to have a center styling on these ticks. So um, we actually need to go inside here and adjust these classes to have also features underscore underscore cell dash dash center. And the center modifier is of course going to, um, you know, once we do the CSS, it is going to make sure that the actual span right here is centered in the middle of the cell. So now saving this and going inside the browser, we have this right here. As we can see, the table is coming along quite nicely and we have all of our different spans right inside here. Now, I might just uh, go inside here and modify this so that the, um, that the core plan maybe only has, uh, you know, uh, oh sorry, uh, this unlimited access may only apply to the professional and above. So let's just save this and remove that span in the first section. And we can see here, we just get nothing inside the basic. So that's so we can actually just see what they are, you know, what it looks like. Okay, so now we can move on to the CSS um, for this table. So basically the CSS is going to involve essentially just styling up each one of these classes, which we specify right here. And the most interesting part is going to be these modifier classes right inside here. So let's go inside this CSS and we can begin by firstly, um, we're just going to be targeting the features uh, table right inside here. And we can just say border collapse and make this collapse. That way, um, our borders for each cell is going to not overlap. Oh, sorry, it is uh, it is going to overlap and it's going to uh, look all nice and flush. 
Okay, we can also now just target the features underscore underscore cell class. So basically, this right here is one of the most important classes for this whole solution, and it defines the basic characteristics um, of a cell. Okay, so the first one here, we're going to say a maximum width of 250 px, and this ensures that the actual content right here doesn't take up uh, too much vertical, or sorry, horizontal space. So now, saving this right here, we can see now um, that has gone down to two lines, and of course, it is now a 250 px cell. Okay. We can also apply right inside here a base font size of 0.9 EM, so 90% of the current font size. We can also just reset the font weight and make the font weight uh, normal. We can also apply some padding here of 0.5 EM top and bottom and 1 EM for the left and right, so basically uh, 0.5 and 1 of the, uh, of the current font size. Okay, we can also give this a text color of just a really dark gray and a border of 1px solid and then just a light gray. And lastly, let's give this a line height of 1.4 to aid with uh, readability or legibility. Let's save this right here and we get something like this in the browser. As we can see, it's actually looking not too bad so far. We have the padding applying to each one of our cells right there. Okay, so now. Let's go inside here and uh, continue with these different classes. So uh, the first modifier class we're going to work with is going to be bold. So let's copy and paste this feature cell bold class right here and give this a font weight of bold. Okay, let's save this and of course we get now everything which is specified as being bold is now bold just like this. I'll just zoom in so you can actually see it. That might help. Um, there we go. And we can go back inside here now and continue with the rest of the classes. So we now have uh, the feature cell shaded. So for the shaded one, we're going to simply uh, adjust uh, the background to be just a really light gray. Let's save this. And now, of course, everything shaded is now shaded. Okay. Uh, we can move on to uh, the next one. And that one is going to be the features cell large. Okay, so let's copy and paste this one. And for the large text, we can simply just make this a font size of 1.25 EM. Let's save this. And of course, now the pricing is large. Now, you may want to actually also make the feature name or sorry, uh, the plan name large. So let's go back inside here. And this is actually this is the benefit of having these individual classes. Because now, if you want to make, you know, a certain amount of uh, cells, a different, you know, style like this, for example, you can easily add all of these classes right here. So now we have a bold, shaded and large uh, cell for the basic prime business uh, plan names. Let's save this. And now, of course, we have large text for the plan names right up there. So moving on now to uh, the second last uh, class, and that is going to be uh, the feature cell center class. OK, so for the center class, uh, as we might imagine, it's going to be a text align of center inside here. So now, of course, our yeses are going to be in the center right there. And it's all looking pretty good so far. So the very last step here is going to be to uh, include um, those green ticks. OK, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to be using CSS pseudo elements. OK, so let's go back inside here and just replace or remove um, these yeses from these spans. OK, and then going inside the CSS, uh, we can target the features underscore underscore tick uh, class right here. And we can say colon colon after. So um, for the after pseudo uh, pseudo element right here, uh, we're essentially creating a virtual element inside the CSS and we can style it just like a regular HTML element or tag. So for this one, we can say content and then we can specify um, our Unicode character of a tick. So basically, if we write backslash and then 2714, uh, 2714 is the character code or uh, the numerics for the actual tick symbol. So it's going to print out a tick symbol to the browser. So let's save this and we get right here the ticks. OK, so that's going to work across multiple devices. OK, so now going back inside here, we can also just give this a font size of 1.5 EM. So 
150 uh, percent of the current font size and also a color of green and we are basically done so now saving this and we get something like this in the browse as we can see it's all looking pretty good so far so the one problem with this solution is that uh, uh, on mobile devices it's not actually going to uh, resize and you might actually get um, you know cases where uh, the page overflows and the user is scrolling left and right so to prevent this from happening and becoming a major disturbance, we can quite easily uh, add a wrapper around this table. So first, I want to show you what I mean. So if I was to go on a mobile device right inside here, uh, uh, refresh and maybe let's go to iPhone 5 if we can. It's looking okay. Maybe I'll, I'll try and add some more content. So let's go back inside here. Let's actually, um, let's copy and paste my content from the... Uh, from the example which I showed earlier. So I'll copy and paste all of this stuff right here and go inside our HTML and let's paste that right there. So that's that's my um, that's my example text. So let's save this and right here. So we're still not getting it. Let's um Okay, so unfortunately I wasn't able to replicate the issue using uh, the actual Chrome dev tools right here, but it was happening on my phone last night. So essentially it's scenarios like this where you have the table which is too large for the actual um, you know, uh, screen and of course it's going to go off screen right there. So if you face this problem with your table, you can fix it by quite simply going inside here and uh, we can add a wrapper around this table. So we can say a div right here and inside the div we can give a style of overflow x and then make this auto. So right here if we then place the table inside the div um, with this right here essentially if I save this we're gonna now as we can see on the bottom here the scroll bar no longer exists on the actual page. Okay so the reason for that is because the scroll bar is now going to be right here where the table is. So basically on really small mobile devices like this, for example, there we go, it's working now. Um, you can essentially, uh, you know, give the user the option to scroll left and right through the table and also maintain the readability. You don't need to change the layout or decrease the font size. Um, so it's all well right there and also uh, the main important bit of this is that if you have content under the table, so for example, let's put decode under here. If you have content right here, then the table scrolling won't actually affect this text and it won't you know, go off the screen. So that is why we wrap it inside a div. Okay, so that right there is how to create a feature comparison table using HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.